Good morning and welcome to our worship, which today comes from Barton St. David. We don't have sound at the very beginning of the service, so I'm going to begin um, the service and then we will rejoin when we reach the um, Psalm 95. The service today is the service of morning prayer. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, so let us worship him together. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And we begin our service by lighting the Advent candles for the third Sunday. People of God, return. You are called to be God's own. From the mountains announce the good news. God comes in justice and peace all who follow his ways you are God's children. Lord make us one in the peace of Christ today and forever. Amen. Our confession uses the bidding and response Lord have mercy and the response is the same Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Christ have mercy. Heavenly Father you call us to prepare for the coming of your Son Forgive our unreadiness to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were proclaimed by John the Baptist. Help us also to prepare your way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you speak through the prophets. Make us to hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's um, stand for the Vinaiti, the Psalm 95. We'll alternate between the plain type and the bold type. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountain are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his mast pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated as Shirley reads our... You're reading the Old Testament, Shirley? Isaiah, Isaiah yeah, as Shirley reads for us. You need to take it off to, oh, you just can't see, yeah. <laughs> it is the hazard. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4 and verses 8 to 11. The good news of deliverance. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me 
because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God shall cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Here ends the first reading. Thank you, Shirley. Our choir in lockdown and in the months beyond have been busy singing. You will see a number of their songs on next week's carol service, but this is one of them. It's Tell Out My Soul, Mary's song, which is particularly appropriate for this time of year.
and George is going to read for us, having just sung. You couldn't hear yourself. In fact, we've got four of the singers here this morning. Hear the gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then? Do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Christ. Let us pray. Lord, our saving light, who came to set us free, shine upon us in your glory. May your light provide illumination for us so that we recognise all those who need our help, however much, however little. Keep us from straying into the works of darkness. Wipe away our tears and grant us your light and blessings. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but for me, Advent has resonated differently this year, and somehow more profoundly. Today we're looking at John, represented by that third candle on the Advent wreath. And John actually stands out to me as the epitome of what Advent is about. I think of him rather as a Janus figure, the, the Roman god of doors, gates and transition, from which our month of January is named. A two-headed figure, heads back to back, one looking back at the old and the other looking forward to the new. The custodian of the gateway, the guardian of transition and the herald of change. Now it's very easy to slip into the way of thinking of Advent as the forerunner to Christmas, John predicting the Saviour to follow. But Advent, of course, is actually looking ahead to the second coming of our Lord in glory at the end times. And this is where we find strong parallels which span 2,000 years of history. John was also born into a strange world. A world where the country of Israel was occupied by the Romans, 
with all that being a resident in an occupied country meant. There would have been fears, tensions, violence, intolerances, resistance and collaboration. And it was also the world into which Jesus was to arrive and he found himself a refugee on the road to Egypt when he was still only months of age. And in the turbulence, which is still part of the Middle East, we can see just this scenario today. The human tragedy and cost goes on. But there is another parallel. The Jews, just as Christians are today, and indeed as the Jews still are, were waiting. They were also an Advent people, anticipating the arrival of a Messiah. And John came into this pattern as the last of the Old Testament prophets. But his story is found in the Gospels as part of the new, the new hopeful understanding of God as a redemptive figure, a God of such love that he came as the most helpless and vulnerable of human beings. The Christmas story tells of light in the darkness and hope in stark times, so we can now turn to the light and hope God gives. John was undoubtedly a strange figure, uncompromisingly outspoken. Elsewhere in the Bible we hear him uh, talking to people as a brood of vipers, which is not the friendliest of gestures. But he lived wild, long periods in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey. But these wilderness periods were highly productive spiritually. And it's worth noting that following his baptism and before beginning his ministry, Jesus too went into the wilderness for 42 days. And somehow this is where I connect our COVID world with Advent. I think it could well be said that we all need our wilderness periods, and they are not always voluntary. But if we use them right, they can shift our perspective and become very fertile ground. And there have been real blessings, as well as real hardship, in these periods of lockdown and this very strange way in which we now live. And I don't need to list any of these for you. Each of you has your own experience of this, but for us all, it is an unprecedented time. We do live in a very secular world, which tends to shout its clamour over the spiritual, which needs quiet, space and reflection, as well as activity in daily living. In his book, A Time to Keep Silence, Patrick Lee for more describes leaving the Benedictine Abbey of saint Vendril in France, where he had been staying. Having found the monastic calm of his surroundings difficult to adjust to initially, he found re-entry into the secular world even more disturbing, and he described this as an inferno of noise and vulgarity. And I suggest to you that you may have found similar feelings with lockdown, Going into lockdown had its challenges, but coming out, for most of us, has been infinitely more difficult. We need to remember that we are also a people in waiting, waiting for a vaccine, the saviour of our modern secular life, where we can hug, touch and circulate to gain without fear, and now this seems in sight. But have we lost sight of our role as a spiritual Advent people? Or have we gained a fresh insight into just what this might mean? Last Sunday, we celebrated Advent with an outdoor Christingle service. And I have to say, it was quite magical. A real reminder that the light of the world is a gift, and it is gently given. It comes with an invitation, not a demand, an invitation to stretch out our hands and to be made welcome. So Advent is a period of hope, a period of promise. Into our dark world, the light of Christ comes in the form of a tiny child. Into our dark world, he will come again. 
And then the prophecy of Isaiah will be fully realized. That good news to the oppressed, the binding up of the brokenhearted, freedom to captives, proclamation of the year of the Lord's favor, a Lord who loves justice and will see it done. I leave you with a quote from Henri Nouon from his book, The Spirituality of Waiting. If it is true that God in Jesus Christ is waiting for our response to divine love, then we can discover a whole new perspective on how to wait in life. We can learn to be obedient people who do not always try to go back to the action but who recognize the fulfillment of our deepest humanity in passion, in waiting. If we can do this, I am convinced that we will come in touch with the glory of God and our own new life. May you wait in peace and hope. Amen. Thank you, Jane. We stand as we affirm together our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the quitting and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we pray. Our prayers this morning pick up on some of those themes of Advent waiting and Advent hope. And to the bidding, um, your kingdom come, would you please respond, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Holy God, ever with us and ever on your way towards us, we look to you this Advent, willing your kingdom to come, but knowing that it's not ours to take. So come to us in the many guises of love, Meet our longing, enter our waiting, give life to our hoping. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, hope of the hopeless, you alone give us reason to go on. Give hope to those who this day all over the world are hungry for basic gifts. Food to stop children aching with hunger. A home to put pictures on the wall. Education to open the door to a job. Justice to give everyone a chance. We particularly pray for those struggling with poverty. And we pray today for our government and the leaders of the European Union as we continue to negotiate the next step in our relationships together. God of hope, 
give hope to the hopeless. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, love of the loveless, you are the one who never fails to love to the limit. You love without question the loveless, the unlovely and the unlovable. May we do the same. We're aware of people or groups of people whom we instinctively reject because of what they've done to us or what they represent to us. We identify with them in our hearts right now. Give us strength to love. Give them strength to respond. And give us the gentleness to love ourselves as well. God of love, give love to the loveless. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent job, God, joy of the joyless. You are the source of inexhaustible delight. In a world of desperate pleasure and stale smiles, take us to the place where true joys are to be found. We pray for those who face Christmas and New Year with deep apprehension because of fears of loneliness, because of fear about cost and implication, because it reveals to them poverty of friends, of love, of purpose, of spirit, or economic poverty. In silence, we pray for particular families, including even our own. And we remember too those who at this time are facing serious illness. We continue to pray for Julia and for any others known to us. God of joy, give joy to the joyless. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Advent God, God of those who think themselves godless. You are the rock on which our lives are built. Have mercy on those who try to live without you. And lead them gently to the truth that sets us free. Come afresh to the minds of those who think they've thought their way out of your reach. Come afresh too to those of us who think we have it all taped, for whom your mystery and power have become dulled and routine. Come afresh to the hearts of us all, whether they be full of distraction or swept clean and empty. We long for you to be central to our lives and central to the life of the world. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Holy God, this Advent we set ourselves to longing again, longing and waiting and hoping. We long for your kingdom to come, for this world to be transformed, for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. But the glimmerings of that new world have also, beco have also become, have also too become real in us. So come, our Advent God, with the promise of new birth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. 
Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our second hymn picks up on many of those themes. O come, O come, Emmanuel. coming.
thank you for coming this morning. Next, this afternoon at four o'clock, there's a quiet Christmas, a blue Christmas, carol service that will be warmer than the other one we're holding, um, and quieter um, in Lidford at four o'clock this afternoon. Next Sunday, our worship is at half past eight in Lidford for Holy Communion, and at half past two in the grain store for a carol service. But if you don't want to go to the grain store, it will, this is a statement of faith at the moment, be live on YouTube at the same time, or you can get it later, or you can request to have it on a DVD or a CD, and we can get it to you hopefully before next Sunday. This is currently a fairly large statement of faith, but it will happen. Um, so if you would like a CD or a DVD, please do let um, myself or Wendy, who um, organizes things in this, benef in this fit parish, um, know, and we will arrange for that to get to you. Christmas services are in the magazine. Carolyn says we've made a mistake with her email address. I'm very sorry. Um, please do book for Christmas services. It's going to make track and trace much easier and um, it means also that we can make sure we're not over full. At the moment, we still have space everywhere. I think the fullest is Lidford on Christmas morning. And the Advent course continues on Tuesday evening at um, half past seven on Zoom. I'm afraid the afternoon course isn't happening this week because I'm accompanying my mother to my uncle's funeral in Sussex and we need to leave on Wednesday morning. Let's pray together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Please don't all stand up and rush for the door at once. Carolyn will um, make sure that we leave in an orderly fashion. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Yep. Yeah.